Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we'll take a trip back to the channel's roots and look at a sort of pure math topic. The suggestion came up in a private message, and it's about whether or not we can come up with a formula for a villager's collection rate that includes all the major factors, like carry capacity, distance to the nearest camp, technology upgrades, etc. If you'd like, pause the video and see if you can come up with one. I'd recommend looking at it from the perspective of a lumberjack's collection rate. Let's check it out. First of all, you might reasonably ask, don't we already know the collection rates? You can find them online and even in several videos I've posted things claiming to be gather rates. The short answer is all of those are right in the same way a stopped clock is right twice a day. Assuming you only look at the clock at the exact time it says, it works great. Just like the gather rate numbers work assuming you never get technology upgrades or have any walking distance. Ideally, in both cases, we want something a bit more dynamic that has some moving parts to it. So let's start from scratch and build up a formula, thinking about the trip of a single lumberjack. To start with, each trip he's going to collect whatever his carry capacity is. Let's say you have wheelbarrow. In that case, he can carry 13 resources. His average collection rate over time then is 13 divided by however long a round trip takes him to do. If it takes him 60 seconds, then he's collecting 13 per minute, and if it takes 20 seconds, then he's gathering 39 per minute, and so on. Notice we have to multiply the 13 by 60 if we want to get our answer in resources per minute. Since 13 here could just have easily have been 10 or 20, we'll start creating our formula by filling that in as a variable. I'm just gonna pick C for carry capacity. Now we need to come up with something that describes how long a round trip takes him to make. If we think about it, there's really two phases to the trip. There's an amount of time he's at the tree doing the physical collecting, and there's an amount of time he's spending walking to the camp and back. The total time for each trip is just those two parts added together. Let's look at the collecting time first. Every unit has a hard-coded collection rate set for each resource. This is before any civ bonuses or technologies. If you see collection rates being quoted, this is likely the number that they're giving you. There's no easy way to come up with the exact number, and if we cheat a little bit and look at the game files, it turns out these are what they are. I feel a little dirty looking it up, but like I said, there's no easy way to come up with the raw collection rates with enough precision for our purposes here. Remember though, we're after the time he's spending at the tree collecting the resources. That's going to be his carry capacity divided by the collection rate. If that step doesn't seem intuitive, we can back it up by showing how the units cancel, or you can pick some numbers and try it out until you're convinced. We'll put that in our formula as R for collection rate. That collection rate isn't always going to stay the same though, and if you get a technology that increases it by 20%, we're going to multiply the collection rate by 1.2. We'll show that with the variable T, which stands for a technology multiplier. We can also include civ bonus multipliers, like the Celts collecting wood 15% faster. I'll label that variable B for bonus. A quick side question we have to answer though is how these bonuses stack on top of each other. Do they add, multiply, or do something else entirely? I ran a quick test and it looks to me like technologies and civ bonuses stack by multiplying together, though they have to be written in the proper form. That isn't the only way those rates could have been combined, but it gives the best fit with practical tests, and luckily it happens to be the simplest for our formula to handle. So that's the actual time spent standing at the tree getting up to their carry capacity. Now we have to account for the amount of time spent walking to the camp and back. This part is pretty straightforward. It's just the distance divided by their walking rate. We do have to remember to multiply it by two for both directions, and we can turn the walking rate into a tech modifier by including their baseline 0.8 tiles per second walking speed. For example, if wheelbarrow or sieve bonus increases walking rate by 10%, we'll replace W with 1.1, because now they'll be walking 0.88 tiles per second. Unfortunately, with the distance, we also have to subtract the half tile that the villager is standing away from the resource, because they work in the middle of a tile and they drop off at the edge. That might seem overly technical, but it's enough of a difference that we want to include it. Put it all together and that's the collection rate formula, regardless of whether the villager is male or female. 
We'll even mic drop with a little QED at the end, printed on the t-shirts. We could also do fancy little things like factor in the time it takes to chop down the tree, but compared to the other factors mentioned, it's a relatively small effect. I should also point out that this formula doesn't work for farmers, and they have a radically different mechanic altogether. Theoretically, we could also come up with a correction factor that could handle pathfinding and crowding, but I've done a bit of preliminary testing with that, and it looks like it would get pretty messy. For our purposes right now, even without that, this is still taking the most important factors into account. The next step here is to verify that it actually works with a couple of examples. Here are some results from actual tests with different technology and civilization combinations with wood, gold, and berries. Using the formula we just came up with, here are the predictions once everything's factored in. In general, the predicted rates are close, but about 1% too high. With wood collection, they also have to chop down the tree, which only takes a second, but adds roughly an extra 1% drop in efficiency. We're throwing a lot of factors at this though, and it's giving us back some pretty accurate numbers, so I'd say it's working as intended. So now that we've got our working formula, as so often happens after an intense math session, we're left with the important question of, is this useful in any way? Now besides saving a ton of time generating numbers, which understandably I would be a bit more excited about than the average player, it also lets us understand the relationships a bit more in depth. It can help answer otherwise unanswerable questions, like how much of the wheelbarrow increase is from the better carry capacity, and how much is from the walking speed. Knowing that it's increasing by 10% at a three-tile distance doesn't tell us how much each factor is contributing to that. Using the formula though, we can break wheelbarrow into its two parts and see it's the carry capacity doing the vast majority of the work. An extra three carry capacity might sound modest, but is actually equivalent to a walking speed increase of 30%. Knowing that fact, we'd expect the Berber's faster walking villagers to be vastly inferior to Aztec villagers with their plus five carry capacity. The numbers certainly bear that out, and in the normal distances villagers walk to lumber camps, the difference is a one to 3% increase as opposed to four to 12%. Some other random facts I found are that tree lines closer than six tiles to a lumber camp benefit more from double bit axe than wheelbarrow, confirming conventional wisdom that double bit axe has very good value and should be a top priority technology. As well, if we compare the gather rate with the market trading formula, it says a market 40 tiles away and a post-imperial villager collecting gold from roughly the same distance should have the same collection rate on a medium-sized map. That's pretty accurate in testing, though in this particular case, I'd recommend building a mining camp. I'm sure there's lots of other creative and interesting questions that I've missed. This is something I expect will pop up again in future videos, and hopefully it gives more interesting answers to questions I tackle in the future. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.